Hey everyone, it's Laura from the blog ArtReallyHouse.com and today I'm going to be sharing a what we eat in a day video and I'm also going to be doing a 20 week pregnancy update. So in this video I'm going to be sharing our breakfast, lunch, and dinner and kind of giving you guys some recipe and meal inspiration for you guys and then at the end of this video I was going to do a quick pregnancy update because I'm already 20 weeks which seems crazy. It's going by really fast, honestly too fast for me. So if you guys want a pregnancy update just stick around to the end of the video and I will do that for you guys. Alright so let's get into the meals. For our breakfast we had homemade biscuits, sausage, and eggs. So for the first thing I did was I made some homemade jam to go on the biscuits. This is a very simple recipe. All you do is add some frozen or fresh strawberries. I like to do frozen in a saucepan, turn it on the heat until they kind of melt and get the juice from there. I find that the frozen ones get a little bit more juice to them and that's why I like to use frozen, but fresh does work as well. Once the strawberries are all melted and it's kind of nice and juicy, I pour this into my blender. I add in a couple tablespoons of chia seeds and honey and blend it up until it's smooth. I then transfer this to a mason jar and I place this in the fridge as it cools it will solidify and it tastes so good and it's a very healthy way to make homemade jelly or jam. While the jelly was in the fridge becoming more solid I started on my biscuits. I just mixed together some flour, salt, and baking powder and then I added in some shredded butter. I use frozen butter because that makes it a lot easier to shred. A little bit of milk and this mix all of this up. Once everything is mixed up, I work it a little bit on a lightly floured wooden surface and then I roll it out flat. I just use my hands for this and then I cut the biscuits out using a mason jar. I baked these in my cast iron skillet so before I put them in I did preheat the oven to 450 and I put my cast iron in there to allow it to preheat as well so that they wouldn't stick. I put a little bit of oil down and then I put the biscuits in the skillet and let them cook. While they were cooking I made some sausage patties just out of a couple pounds of pork sausage and then I fried these up on a cast iron skillet. When the sausage was finished I pulled them off and then I just fried some eggs in the sausage grease. It just makes them really good and then I served this up. For lunch time I made a Mexican lasagna. So I started off by making some beans in my Instapot. Next 
first I got some rice going in my Dutch oven. I'll link my homemade taco seasoning recipe down below or you can just use regular taco seasoning from the store. This gives the rice a really nice Mexican flavor. If you're in a hurry, you can just use Mexican rice, but I made my own because I had plenty of time. While the beans and rice was cooking, I baked some chicken in the oven and when it was done, I took it out, I cut it up to make it into sliced like kind of fajita chicken. I sprinkled it with some chili powder and squeezed the juice of one lime on it. When the rice was finished, I transferred it to another bowl because I was actually gonna be using this Dutch oven to layer my lasagna in. I then sauteed some peppers and onions. This was kind of a last minute thought. I just realized I wanted some more veggies in this and I had some diced onions and peppers already in the fridge. So I sauteed those quickly in some oil. I layered this in my Dutch oven with salsa, chicken, beans, rice, a little bit of cream cheese, some of my sauteed vegetables, and then some cheddar cheese. added more layers until I got to the top of the Dutch oven and added some of the cheddar cheese on top and then I just put this in the oven until the cheese was all melted. I topped it with some avocados, chives, and red onions. For dinner, we had elk steaks and pork chops. I didn't have enough meat of each one, so I had to make a little bit of both. Some green beans and some twice baked potatoes. So for my green beans, I started off by melting some butter in a cast iron skillet. I minced some garlic in the butter, and then I added just a bag of frozen green beans to that to let them cook in the butter and garlic. While the green beans were cooking, I got my elk steaks going. I did these on my griddle and they made some really delicious steaks. I just put them on plain. I didn't even salt and pepper them, but I'm going to be topping them with a rosemary butter. I baked some potatoes in the oven and once they were done, I sliced them open to let them cool slightly and then I made twice baked potatoes with them. For 
the butter that I was making to top the steak with. I did about two tablespoons of butter with a few cloves of garlic and some rosemary, mixed it all up, and then when the steaks were cooked, I put this on top of the steaks to let it melt into the meat, and it was so delicious. For the twice baked potatoes, I just scooped all the baked potatoes out into a big bowl. I added in some sour cream, some salt and pepper, and whipped that up until it was nice and soft. And then I put the back inside of the baked potato peels. I topped this with cheese and some red onion, and I baked it in the oven just to get the cheese melted. For the pork chops, I just melted some butter in a cast iron skillet, put my pork chops in, and then put some barbecue sauce on them. I will link the homemade barbecue sauce in the description box that I like to use. And I just baked these in the oven. Like I said, there wasn't enough of the elk steak to feed the whole family, so I had to make some pork chops to go along with this. I hope you guys enjoyed those recipes and that it gave you some new meal ideas. I don't know about you, but we are constantly eating a lot of the same things. And so sometimes I like to watch videos like this and get some ideas to think of some new things that we can make, even if I like to recreate them a little bit, maybe use some substitutions and things. It just gives me a good idea. And several of those recipes are actually on my husband's cast iron skillet cooking blog. And so I'll link those down in the description box for the exact recipes so you guys can find them there. All right, so for the pregnancy update, honestly, there's not a whole lot to update you on. I am 20 weeks today when this video goes out, so I'm halfway through this pregnancy. It is definitely seeming like it's flying by. I've noticed that the more children I have, the faster the pregnancy goes, and I am one of those weirdos that loves being pregnant, and so I like to savor it, especially when it's this time of the pregnancy. Pregnancy, you know, I'm past any type of like morning sickness, which if you watched my pregnancy announcement, you know that my morning sickness was not terrible this time. I had just some slight nausea and maybe like two weeks where it was like kind of bad, but not horrible, but it was so fast that I already like forget about it. It was so quick. Um, all my energy is back. I'm just feeling completely normal besides the fact that I have a growing little baby bump and baby inside of me. I'm at the stage where I'm starting to feel little flutters and that's just super exciting. That's like my absolute favorite part of pregnancy. Um, I love feeling the baby move inside of me. And as we go further along and it gets like more intense and you see those like arms and elbows go across and like feet. I just absolutely love that. I find myself at nighttime, me and my husband are like sitting down at the end of the day to watch a show or something on TV that I'm like staring at my stomach the whole time. I'm not even watching the show, I'm just watching my stomach and like hands on there and like every two seconds be like, hey, feel this, feel this. And I know I just love that feeling. It's one of those things that I miss as soon as pregnancy is over, I miss having that inside of me because I just love that feeling. Um, okay, so we are doing or planning to do our first home birth. If you have been around for any of my other birth stories, you know that we had our first three in the hospital, and then my last two we had in a birthing center. Now, after we had our third one, the third one in the hospital, we I did completely naturally. I was just there for not very long. I kind of tried to stay home as long as I could. Had them pretty quickly. I'll link my birth stories below. And so after I had one naturally in the hospital, we decided we would try the birth center. And after my first birth center birth, it went really well and no complaints. I 
really wanted to do a home birth, but my husband still wasn't too comfortable with the idea of a home birth just because he hadn't really done a whole lot of research on the topic and where we lived, we were farther away from a hospital than like where we live now since we've moved. Um, and so if there was a need for a transfer, it would take a lot longer to get to a hospital. And so we compromised on our second birth and our birth. Now again, that birth went really well. I had no complaints, but the only thing that I hate about the birth center is that I have to get up out of my bed and move during the hardest part of labor because I'm kind of one of those people that tends to just kind of chill out at home. I like to use the Bradley method where I'm just laying completely still, relaxing through my contractions, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, it's time to go, and I have to get up and move to the birth center. The birth center isn't really any different than a home birth. The things that are at the birth center, the midwives would bring to a home birth. And so basically the only difference is that I don't have to get up and go basically to a different home birth because at the birth center, you still get birth in a like, queen size bed. There aren't any options for Pitocin or epidural um, or a C-section, any of those types of things. You would have to transfer just like you would at home. Um, um, there's a big bathtub if you want to give birth in the bathtub you can do that at home and so that's not really too big of a difference so now that we've done that twice and now that we live a little bit closer to a hospital where we moved to we are excited to try our first home birth so that's our plan I have met with my midwives I think twice now and um, everything just goes pretty well they just ask me you know like how I'm feeling about what I'm eating they check my blood pressure just all the same normal things that you would do at a normal prenatal visit. I am currently taking just a prenatal supplement, just like a vitamin. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm trying to get a lot of like protein, um, raw milk and different types of things like that into my diet to make sure that I'm getting enough calories, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, just all that good stuff. We are not finding out the gender of this baby. We're gonna be surprised. We've done that with our last th two, two births, yeah. So we found out with our first three and our last two we did not find out and we're excited to do that again. We know now like going forward or even if we could go backwards, we would never find out gender. It has been like the best thing. I just love that excitement. Just one more thing to be excited about when I'm in labor, knowing that I'm about ready to find out if I'm having a boy or a girl. I like that unknown kind of throughout pregnancy. Um, the only thing that makes it a little difficult is whenever we're trying to pick names because we don't really know if we're having a boy or a girl. So our last two were both boys and we didn't know the gender until they were born and we didn't have a name exactly picked out for them until after they were born, but we kind of decided on something pretty quickly. All right, so if you have been here, you know that I have one girl and four boys so far. And so if we have another boy, this will be our fifth son. And that is really, really hard to choose a name whenever you've already had four of the same gender. So because we only have one girl and we've had four boys in a row, we have a girl name set in stone because it's going to be the girl name was gonna be the same for each one of the boys. It has not changed. We still love it. We're hoping we can use it someday just because of how much we love it. But for the boy name, we kind of have like an ongoing list. I just, when I think of a name or my husband says a name, we put it in my phone and we kind of like look back at them and then we're like, yeah, no, I don't even know why I put that one in there. We take it back out. But there are some in there that like he really loves. There's a couple in there that I really love. Nothing that we're both just like totally in love with or um, agreeing on. So as of right now, we do not have a boy name. It'll probably remain that way until the end of pregnancy. And if we have a boy, then we'll probably look at them and kind of like look at our little list we have and decide then what we're gonna name them because it's super hard. If you've had like multiple kids of the same gender, you know, it gets really hard to start naming these boys. My husband actually said this morning, I think it was this morning, he said, we can just start with Sam Jr. again. So our first one's name is Sam, our first boy. And we thought we could just like, he said we could just go back through their names and just start naming them the junior of the other ones. So we could just start, start over. Obviously he was joking, but we're having a hard time deciding on what we're gonna name him if he is a boy. So as far as what I think, I am like, 99.999% sure that it's a boy. And I think that's mainly because I just feel like how in the world would I have a girl? It's been nine years since I've had a girl. Um, 
my sisters, the, my, in my family I have three sisters, and my two younger sisters haven't had any children yet. My older sister has had seven, and she had two girls first, and then she had five boys. So we are on this like total boy streak. We have had nine boys in a row, and so I just feel like why, why would we have a girl now? I feel like we're gonna probably have 10 in a row, and that's gonna be this little one here, but I really have no idea. Um, I have been sick with three of my pregnancies, and then three, including this one, I have not been sick. And with the three that I was sick, it was a girl and two boys. And then it, the ones that I was sick was two boys and I don't know yet. And so I have like no signs or symptoms or anything to point to which way it is. I just have this feeling that it's a boy just because I feel like why, why would I have a girl? Um, we'll be happy with whatever we end up having. A lot of people think that my daughter is like dying for a sister and she honestly goes back and forth some days when the boys are like getting on her nerves. She's like, if this is another boy. And then like other times she says, I want to be the only girl in the family. I don't want to have a sister because I like being the only girl and I like being the prince and so it kind of flip-flops with her. She doesn't seem to care. She loves all of her brothers. Obviously they get in their little brother, sibling, sister fights, but they, she gets along with them fine. She plays well with them. And so she's not like going to like freak out if it's a boy at all. And as far as me as well, like I am happy. It would be, it would be nice to have a girl mainly for evening things out with like sharing of bedrooms. If my husband wants to take the boys camping and I want to go on a girl's trip or like things like that that don't even happen that often, we're a little bit more divided rather than him having like five kids and me having one. But other than things like that, honestly, it doesn't matter. I am, you know, we're happy with whatever. We just hope that we get a healthy little baby or a baby that at least goes to like full term. I've never had an issue with that before. But you know, having a baby that's 40 weeks and happy and healthy is all we really care about. So anyway, that is the pregnancy update. Like I said, there's not too much to update on. I'm feeling extremely good. I have all my energy back. I can eat all the foods. I'll show you guys a little baby bump picture and kind of show you guys that. I definitely feel like I'm showing quicker this pregnancy than I have with past pregnancies. I think that just happens as you have more babies. But other than that, it's just kind of going well. It's been smooth sailing. And like I said, I just love being pregnant. So this is the time when I just want it to slow down and I just want to be pregnant forever. <laughs> but anyway, obviously we are excited to meet the baby when that time comes. So I am due at the end of August. So we have 20 more weeks until it is time to meet our little baby and hopefully we'll be doing that right here in our home. All right, if you guys are new here, please hit that subscribe button. I get out a new video every single week. All right guys, talk to you soon.